please join me as we learn our theme song. God's amazing grace. The fullness of His grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Having loved His own who were in the world, He now showed them the full extent of His love. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. See you. 
refreshing and reviving morning to everybody. Good. You know, in some big companies, this is their practice. They say good morning all throughout the day. There should be something good about the morning, right? I am happy to be with you today. A while ago, I had a short talk with our speaker this morning. With a short talk that we had, I feel already inspired and blessed. Today, our speaker who comes from Paranaque City is expecting a miracle through her. She wants God to use her today. She admits that she has a lot of weaknesses and one of these is speaking. But she says, God, I challenge you today, use me. She will talk about an interesting topic. Since most of you here are from the health division of this university, am I right? Yes. Imagine yourself on duty on a particular day and a patient of yours dies. And when the person was declared dead, the family starts to cry. An hour after the death, the family gets startled. Why? The person awake said, hello, I'm alive. Could that be possible? That's something we have to learn today. Let me read some writings of Ellen G. White from two issues on the Review and Herald and one issue on youth youth instructor. Christians are to be faithful students in the school of Christ. And do you think that by embracing the truth of God, you are degrading yourself? The truth elevates the receiver every time. It will not be safe for you to wait for a better time to come. It is while it is cold today if anyone will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. It's to listen today to the invitation of mercy. It is to yield your pride, your folly, your vanity, and make an entire surrender of your heart to God. Come to him with all your talents and all the influence you have, and lay all this without reserve at the feet of him who died on Calvary's cross to redeem you. Once again, have a blessed, reviving, and restoring day. Good morning. Please stand for our theme song. all kneel as I pray. <clears throat> Our loving God in heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity 
that we can pray, we can ask your presence to be felt in our midst as we gather together and worship you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the preservation of our lives. Thank you for this opportunity that our students and faculty members can have this kind of congregation. We would like to pray for your holiness and peace to be experienced by each one of us as we listen to the message that is prepared by your chosen servant. Thank you for the assurance of being with us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed morning to everyone. How are you doing today? Again, how are you doing today? Great, amen. And how was the first series of our week of prayer? Awesome, great, amen. You know what, personally for me, I was really, really blessed. Not just from yesterday's message, but as well, throughout the week of preparation of this week of prayer, I've been blessed. God has been working in my life, and I want you to experience that as well. And I, yesterday, I've learned that, according to Brother Alvin, we have learned that in order for us to be restored, we need to give our willing hearts to God. And so before we jump to our message this morning, I would like to ask a question. Who among you have faced a near-to-death experience? Kindly raise your hands. Mm -hmm. Few of you raised their hands. But let me ask you, after experiencing that kind of life-threatening situation. What are the things that you do? What are the things that they did in order for you to bring back your life again? But you know what? I am standing before you all because I have a very, very important message for all of us. Listen carefully. Do you believe that we are living in the last days? Amen. All of us right now is facing a near-to-death experience. And not even medications, doctors, and even our beloved AUP clinic, our hospitals can cure us. But the only thing that can cure us is by the method of resuscitation, spiritual resuscitation. And that is the title of the message of the Lord this morning. Let's bow down our heads. Our Father in heaven, here we are, O oh God. We are weak and sinner, sinful. Father God, we humble ourselves before you be because we are nothing. But Lord, we claim by the blood of Jesus Christ, we will be restored. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to condescend on us. Lord, please prepare our hearts in hearing the words. And I would like to let the my fellow students and our faculties and staffs, that I will not be the one speaking, but it is you, O oh God. It is your Holy Spirit. Lord, we claim this by power and with faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who among you brought your Bibles with you? Kindly raise it up. Come on. Raise it up. Raise it up very high so that we can see it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? All of us here are students, and some are faculties and staff. All of us 
are students of Adventist University of the Philippines. And I believe that we are in the school of Christ. So, to those who weren't able to bring your Bibles, I encourage you to bring your Bibles tomorrow. And I tell you, you won't regret for this bread of life will sustain our lives. This will sustain our lives. This is our life, I tell you. Okay, the focus of our study will be found in the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18 to 37. Okay, so... Just prepare your Bible so that when I tell what verse, you can easily read it. Okay. In a distant land, there lived a couple who seems to live very contented and happy with their lives. And until one day, Elisha, Elisha, when to their place called Shunem. And suddenly, you know, this Shunemite woman happens to know that Elisha is a man of God. And during their time, and even to our generation, whenever we hear the word man of God, there are a lot of things that come to our mind. And you may say, a man of God, ooh, he's, he is a holy person, or he is an individual who knows, or who can perform miracles, right, Ayanda? Yes. Or even, he can raise a dead person. Isn't it that great? And so, because of this fate of this woman, he initiated, or you know, whenever Elisha passed, he, she would um, give foods, offer some foods, breads to Elisha. And not only that, you know what? She offered an upper room. Upper room with table, chair, lump stand, and bed. And so, Elisha got curious. How come this Shunammite woman keeps on giving stuff. But if you're going to notice, Elisha is not a poor person. In fact, he has a servant, Gehazi. So because of their curiosity, Elisha asked Gehazi, Gehazi, can you ask, can you ask that Shunammite woman, is there something wrong? So Gehazi asked Gehazi asked that Shunammite woman, and he said, Hey, Shunammite woman, um, is everything, do you have any problem, or do you need anything, or do you need protection so that we can help you? And you know what? This Shunammite woman, of all the answers that he can, uh, or she can answer, she just said, I dwell among my own people. Meaning to say, that everything is all right. But you know what? Because I believe that there are some Gehazi students here. Gehazi students here. Why? Because, you know, because of Gehazi's mental telepathy or some connections, he said to his master, you know what, master? That Shunammite woman... has a husband. She has a husband, but his husband is already old. And not only that, she doesn't have a son. And so, after knowing that, they informed this Shunammite woman that this season, or this time, by next year, when? Next year. She will bear a son. And upon knowing that this, this 
Shunammite woman said, no way. You must be kidding me. That's impossible. I've been with my husband for so many years, and then you're just going to tell me that I'm going to have a son? No way. Despite of that, that unbelief or faithless statement of this Shunammite woman, at the appointed time, this Shunammite woman conceived and bear, bore a son. And in verse 18, if you're going to look at it, it tells us that this child have grown already. And so, while the, this, this child was on the field, Suddenly, he said, my head, my head. Of course, he, he will not say, my head, my head. Of course, he, he will not get the attention of his father. And so after saying that, his father saw him. And then one of, he instructed one of his servants and said, bring him to his mother. And upon reaching his mother there, he rested there and then felt the loving arms of his mother. And there he died. He died that fast? Oh, come on. I tell you, friends, he died that fast. In our study as a nursing student, there are a lot of reasons why that person can die. One factor is it could be because of aneurysm. Where are the faculties here? Our clinical instructors. Aneurysm. Because there is a rupture of the blood vessels in the clinical instructors. <laughs> yes, in our brain. Or as a child, there is a possibility that, you know, the, that child may have a you know hyperactive character or clumsy and then he might accidentally bump his head and there he died bump his head on a sharp object but you know what despite of that we don't know what what is the real reason it's not written in the bible but despite of this experience you know what this mother didn't give up she didn't give up but instead she hurriedly went to mount carmel where elisha was so she was with her donkey riding there with the with her servant and there uh, while traveling Elisha saw the Shunammite woman and he said to Gehazi, Hey, Gehazi, you see that woman? That's the Shunammite woman. Come on, ask, ask her if is everything okay. And then so she went, he went there, Gehazi went there and then he asked, he asked the Shunammite woman, oh, Ma'am, is everything okay? Um, is everything okay with your husband, your, your son? And you know what? This Shunammite woman just answered, It is well. It is well. But when this woman reached Elisha, she caught his feet and Gehazi, when he saw that, she, he pushed her. He pushed her. But you know what? Elisha told him in verse 27. You can, you can look in your Bible. Verse 27. Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. 
In verse 28, this woman replied, Did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? And she was like blaming Elisha. I did not ask a son from you. I didn't expect anything. But you were the one who offered or gave this son. But how come after giving it, you're just going to get it to me? How come? But then, after hearing that statement, Elisha instructed his servant like this. Okay, Gehazi, um, kindly get my stuff and then go to Shunem and then lay my stuff on his head. And while you're traveling, don't talk to anyone. Don't talk to anyone. And so, when this Shunamite heard that, because of her persistence, she said to Elisha, in verse 30, what did the mother say? As the Lord leaves, and as your soul leaves, I will not leave you. And so, Elisha can't do anything, so he just followed. And after, after, the, after Gehazi followed the instruction of his master, he went to Elisha and said, um, Master, um, actually, I have followed what you've said, and I laid the stuff on his face, and there's no voice nor hearing. The boy has not awakened. What would be the reaction of Elisha? What? The child in that awakened? Of course not. He will not say that. Listen carefully to this. What Elisha did was, here, we can find in verse 32. So, the child is already dead. And in verse 33, Instead of shouting to his servant, he just said, What he did was, he went in, therefore, are you following? Are you following? Amen. He went in, therefore, shut the what? The door behind the two of them. And there, he, what did he do? What did he do? I can't hear it. What did he do? Amen. Amen. He prayed to whom? To the idols? No. He prayed to the Lord. And in verse 34, this is the most important part. In verse 34, after praying, you know, before doing anything, he prayed first. But let us see what is in verse 34. What did Elisha do? Oh, what's wrong? What's going here? What's going on here? Emergency? Oh, thank you to our medics. Okay. Thank you, thank you. In a life threatening situation, nursing students, where are the nursing students? How come? It seems like you're shy. Where are the nursing students here? There you go. We should be proud on our course. Yeah, on our field. Okay. In a life threatening situation, the most important thing that we need to do is what? Re resuscitation. And so, 
of course, if there is an emergency, the first thing that you need to do is to assess, assess the responsiveness of the patient. It's like, sir, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. It's not like, sir, are you okay? Sir, sir, are you okay? It's not like that. The patient will die. Or like, sir, are you okay? Are you okay? And then after that, you're going to call the nearest hospital. And then after that, you, you check the circulation, the, the pulse of the patient. There. And then after that, check if there's any airway obstruction. There. And then like that. Yes. Can you see it? Let me move. Uh, it's kind of heavy. Okay. Can you remove any airway obstruction? Yes. And then after that, check for B. Breathing. So, of course, you're going to observe the rise and fall of the chest. And at the same time, you're going to feel if there's air coming out from the mouth and nose. But then, if there's no breathing, you'll do, you'll administer two breaths. Yes. Do like this. Of course, in, in, the, in doing the first part, airway obstruction, you need to tilt the head. And then you'll do, um, administer breath, two. Yeah, one and two. And then, if there's still no breathing, the next thing that you need to do is the compression of the external chest. Or here, in the 2.5 to 3 inches or in the siphoid process. Okay. Siphoid process. And then, We'll do like this. Of course, maybe I'm doing it slowly, but in the real situation, you should, you should do it fast because I'm just illustrating it to you. Okay, of course, you will do one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, something like that, until you reach 100 in just one minute. But the point here is that how come... How come in all the thousand methods and ways of the Lord, how come he didn't use this method? Let's see in verse 34. Verse 34, are you there? Amen. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his his eyes on his and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself on the child and the flesh of the child became warm. How come not doing resuscitation like with CPR and doing like this? Of course, it says in verse 34 that <laughs> Okay. Eyes to eyes. Oh man. Mouth to mouth and hands to hands. I'll reach it like this. Eyes to eyes, mouth to mouth, and hands to hands. Isn't it the Lord telling us something here? There could be something behind this verse. How come eyes to eyes, mouth to mouth, and hands to hands? Isn't it the Lord reminding us? To guard our avenues 
of the soul. And if you listen to Brother Alvin, he said that Elijah, Elijah lay his body, stretch his arms. But here, it was emphasized here, not only stretching his arms or laying on the body's child, but the Lord emphasized here, eyes to eyes, mouth to mouth, and hands to hands. Friends, what are the things that we read? What are the things that we read? New moon? Twilight? Wasn't it? Wait, no. First is twilight, new moon, eclipse, and breaking the... Oh, oh no, you memorized it? Okay, let's, let's go to the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Wait, wait, how come this part only... What are the things that we read? Do we spend much time reading our medical and surgical nursing, our hematology, our Greek and Hebrew? <laughs> no. Then spending much time Reading the Word of God, each verse has its meaning. And how about watching? What are the things that you watch? I know to some of us are we don't have TV, but in our you know it's more techy. The cell phone, we have TV there already, and I can see in our dorm. There's a cell phone there with TV. Yeah. What are the things that we put in our minds through watching videos? Or about guys? What are the things that we satisfy our lustful desires? Lustful desires. What are the things that we watch? FHM? Name it. There are a lot. There are a lot. That's why I remember a song that sounds like this. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you... Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you... For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. How about our mouth? What are the things that you put in your mouth? The things that we eat. I believe most of us here, or almost all of us here, have tried eating there in the cafeteria. Were you able to see the posted bulletin there, or like in the entrance part? What is the verse? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. In everything we do, we are to glorify God. Are we glorifying God when we eat? I remember, you know what? Um, based on my experience, I love eating. And I noticed that whenever I eat very fast and when I finish my food, I tend to eat some more, you know, craving. I want some more, but once I eat very slowly, you know, the mirror, but the girls, but still, there, I easily get full. Yeah, but the one thing that 
I, ap- I really appreciate in eating slowly or chewing it 32 times, Ministry of Healings. Yeah, 32 times. This will help. This will give you proper digestion in your body, and this will distribute all the nutrients in your body. That's the benefit, right? But how about the things that we utter? We're not just talking about the food, but we're also talking about the things that we say. You know what? Um, last night, I was really looking for, I'm looking for an attire, CI uniform. And I praise God. God brought me to Mom Hernandez. And I praise God for he provided this. And when I arrived there, I praise God. You know what? I saw them having worship. And they, they joined me, praise God. Praise God to see that. And then all of their family were there. And the topic is about the things that we utter. Do we think first before we say something? Does our words build up each other? Or it just broke, break relationships? Instead, I'm not just speaking with the students here. Also our faculties and staff. Instead of being the peacemaker to our teachers, to our students, we are the ones who make it even worse. What are we doing? You know what, friends? I know it is a struggle, but last week, I received a text message from my friend, and the message goes like this. From Patriarchs and Prophets says here that be watchful and tactful and careful with your words and actions. Everyone is exerting an influence upon others and will be held accountable for the result of influence. My dear friends, I am reminding you that words and actions have a telling power and that hereafter will show the effect of our life here. The impression made by our words and deeds will surely react upon ourselves in blessing or in cursing. If you're going to reflect yourselves, right now what was the last word you utter does it bring blessing to others or it just curse your seatmate your brothers and sisters how about in our hands our hands do we satisfy our unselfish desires by Cadena. Our dorms here. There are a lot in our dorm that we satisfy our hands by stealing or even petting. Petting, you know, touching. Without even minding our limitations. Opposite sex, boyfriend, girlfriend. Are we mindful of that? Or even because of your, your superiority, you want to bottle your classmate or your friend, the new recruited member? Friends, last sermon of Kuya Wayne, he emphasized that we are to love each other. And if you bottle, If you steal your friend's tuition fee, do we show love to them? Even in getting stuff from our roommates, do we ask permission? I don't know. 
I don't know. It says in James 4, verse 7 to 8, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil. Whom are you going to resist? The devil. And he will what? Flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. There are times, once the temptation is already there, we tend to, we know that that's already a scene. We tend to, and then later on, we'll browse and read it, and then touch it, and do it. It's just start on a simple scene. At first, you're kind of nervous or afraid. But later on, as you do it again and again, It will become big until you're already addicted and your hearts and minds are already numbed, callous by the worldly pleasures. I'm not just talking to you, my dear friends. I'm also talking to myself. The word is not just for you. The message is also for me. Eyes, mouth, and hands. There are three things that we need to remember. First is we are to open our eyes to the truth. We are to what? Open our eyes to the what? To the truth. Second, we are to reflect. Brain from unhelpful inputs and outputs of our mouth. The third is, we are to engage ourselves, our hands, in the service of our master, in his service. You know what? I can imagine. To some of you, I may not know you all, but it's so nice to imagine that in heaven, we'll be there, and we will... While we're here, we're doing, a, we're doing the work of God. I believe when we go out there, we'll greet each other. Hi, my dear brother and sister. It's like we're, we're the sons and daughters of God. But the Lord is reminding us to guard the avenues of our souls. They are everywhere. Temptations, worldly pleasures are here. They are even here. They are here right now. Cell phones, texting. We tend to, it's like we're just sitting there and then we think things. That doesn't glorify God. Friends, let us be watchful on the things that we do. From our message yesterday, it was emphasized that first thing that we need to do is to acknowledge our sins. And after acknowledging our sins, after acknowledging our sins, we are to rest. Rest in His Loving arms. Don't forget the rest word. Word, rest, rest, rest. And if we're going to connect the rest and open your eyes to the truth, what's next? Refrain from unhealthful inputs and outputs of the mouth. And last is engage our hands to the service of God, the initials of the first word I've mentioned here, and you combine this to here, this will form seven letters. And that is restore. Restore. But wait, there's more. 
In verse 34 and 35, Elijah did it twice. Isn't it the Lord reminding us that revival, it's not, it's not just, it doesn't happen once, but many times, revival is a process. Verse 34 and 35, on the last part of 35, it says, Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Why sneeze? In our communicable disease lecture, um, our teacher emphasized that once you sneeze, there is something wrong. Your body is telling you that there's something wrong in your body. And you have to expel it out, or you have to sneeze. And by the next word, sneezed, how many times? At the back, how many times? Seven. Why seven? Seven is a perfect number, which means sneezed. Perfect. We need a complete surrender to our God. Complete surrender in our God. I want to call my friend here, Shemaya. And while she's singing, try to ponder upon it. The words that she'll be singing. They came to Jesus in Galilee. to learn at his feet how kind his teachings how gentle their 
experienced having broken families, separated parents, having failures, problems. Each of us have different struggles and experiences in lives. But the good news here is that God can restore us. He can't restore us if we are perfect. If we are on a good condition. The good news here is that God can restore you because you are spiritually dead. We are spiritually dead. Friends, if you are in need, and if your prayer is for God to give you a spiritual resuscitation, if you want God to restore and resurrect you, I invite you to stand. Friends, we are not standing because the crowds, our classmates standed. But we standed because it is our own special decision that we have been struggling for so many years. If during New Year you weren't able to have this decision to come to God, remember, if God send his only son to save you to save us from all our unrighteousness he did not come for the righteous ones he come he comes for the sinners he did not ask to go up there he himself went here in person to restore us Friends, talk to God. Ask God to transplant His eyes in your eyes, His mouth in our mouth, and in our hands, in His hands in our hands. 
Some of us may say, Lord, I can do this. I can throw the CDs, DVDs, the magazines that I've been re- reading since I was a child. This is me. I can't give this. But friends, the Lord is telling us that we need a complete surrender in Him. Friends, the Lord is waiting. To some of you, you have been restored recently. The Lord, right now, can restore and transform you. And as you go out to that door, if you have the faith that God can change you, you will be restored. You will be restored. Shall we bow down our heads? Lord God, here are thy children. Here we are, O God, sinner as we are. Lord, we are tired living in this world, watching movies, watching pornographic movies, magazines, and even reading books that degrades and poisons our minds. Lord, sorry if we have caused you heartaches. Lord, here we are. By faith, we claim, we claim that you are going to restore us. In Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Be restored, be restored.